We are here in Cozumel on a boat hanging out with Todd Runger, one of my kind of early heroes, and I'll tell him about that. He doesn't know about all this stuff. We're going to talk. Todd, how are you? Thanks for doing this. Good. Thanks for having me. No, it's a, it's a short but not a long story at all. You with um, Utopia, when you were, I think it was Utopia, when you wore that jumpsuit, that, that, that body suit, and you had a, a SG, and you used to have a tape recorder behind you. Well, I opened for, uh, I was the opening act for Utopia as well. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah, I would come out first with a uh, tape recorder and I would do a few songs of the piano. There would be, uh, I think I would do Never Never Land. I had a version of Never Never Land on an album called The Wizard of True Star. And I have a little magic wand that I you would. You did it on TV and stuff though. Yeah, we yeah. do. That's brave. I had a, a costumer. That's why I had all, all those outfits on. No, it was cool. And I was uh, I was wanting to be a psychedelic kind of guy then, and, and I got kicked out of Montrose. And when <laughs> I saw you, I thought, I'm going to do that. And this business is just so hard to get along with musicians forever. Musicians aren't, I don't think we're hard to get along with. It's just that we, we get insecure, I think, is what happens to most of these guys. That's, you know, for me, that's why I became Sammy Hagar instead of being in a band. Because I thought, well, I'm right. going to control it now. You know, I'm going to make sure I'm not going to get kicked out of a band again. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, well, you know, Utopia had the same, eventually had the same issues. Yeah. You know, it wasn't so much that we weren't playing anymore, but we had become too dependent on the band concept. Once we became sort of dependent on the money that the band generated, it got too much pressure, you know. And so that was what broke Utopia up originally. You have had the most amazing producer success. I mean, you've produced some of the mm -hmm. biggest bands, like, uh, you know, their classic album, you know, mm -hmm. Meatloaf, Bad Out of Hell, and uh, uh, Grand Funk, Grand Grand Funk Grand you know, she's an American, we're an American Bad band. Finger, had a few. Yeah. So I started out. Before I had anything of a solo career, I started out as an engineer and producer for the That's so awesome. Music. Do you like producing yourself? Uh, I enjoy it. I enjoy, you know, the, the kind of freedom, especially uh, like after I had my success with something, anything, I decided that I wanted to change the rules of recording, at least for myself, so we built our own studio in New York City. And from that point on, I, my whole philosophy was completely different. Songwriting and everything all took place in the studio now. What's your favorite kind of music? What do you listen to right now? What, 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 um, what do you enjoy? I'm a there? pretty eclectic listener. Um, when I was growing up, my dad, uh, he liked music, but he hated rock and roll. So I grew up with contemporary classical, like Ravel and Stravinsky and that sort of stuff. Damn, and then, excuse me. Oh, wait, whoa, whoa, you're sipping out of my league now. Yeah. <laughs> but also, like, he liked show, show music, show tunes and stuff yeah. like that. That's a big influence. When I started buying records, I think one of the first records I ever bought was, uh, was Dionne Warwick, the one that Burt Bacharach wrote all of the songs for. Yeah, there's some good songwriting. And there. he became, like, a big influence on me. The Beatles uh, know less than anyone else. Yeah, I, I can hear the Beatles yeah. in your music. I do. I hear that, you know, like the Bad Finger kind of stuff. And I could see you really, that, you know, producing that band. That well, the Nats was supposed to be a combination of the Beatles and the Beach Boys and the Who. <laughs> you know, that was kind of like, you know, the uh, Al Alchemedia mixture that we made. Who's Who's the greatest artist of all time? Greatest artist? Well, like, if you break it down into, like, separate categories. Well, okay. Rock, Let's say rock. the great, greatest game. guitar player of all time, undisputedly, is Jeff Beck. Oh, over uh, Jimi Hendrix. Undisputably, Jeff wow. Beck. Wow. Listen, folks. Joe Satriani, Jim, you're going to eat that. You're going to... No, if you ask Joe, I, he'll, if you ask no, Joe he he'll say the same he's thing. He's a Hendrix guy. We all love Jeff Beck. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But him, see, I'm more of a Jeff Beck clown. I like that style. Yeah. And Hendrix, I never even used a whammy bar in my life. Eddie, you know, mm -hmm. I played with him forever. But since. the thing about Jeff Beck is just he no, just gets just, better and better and better and better and, and discovers new sings. things all the time. He, when he plays a solo, he's talking to you. He yeah. is the most vocal guitarist on the planet. I agree 100%. Yeah. Todd, thank you for doing the show with me. It's my been pleasure. a pleasure. This week is really special for me. I have a man sitting next to me that has not only influenced the way I sing, the bands he's been in, been some of my favorite bands of all time, have influenced the way I write songs, the way I sing, the way I play guitar, and it's an honor to have a 
superstar sitting next to me, Mr. Paul Rogers. Wow. Thank you, Sammy. You're nice welcome. One. Nice intro. Look, I got goosebumps already. <laughs> <laughs> what a show. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> so, Paul. Yes. How do you like being a, a star? I mean, you've been a star a long time. A star? Um, well, how do you I, like I, being famous? I, how about I, that? I have mixed I have mixed feelings about being a star, being a, a, being part of show business because I, 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 show business as a thing is not something I really like. I like uh, I try to be myself all the time in the face of like, you know, you make a record and you become a, sort of like a household na name in so, so many ways. And you, I feel like um, I, very shy. I want to back away from all of that, you know what I mean? But I do, I love to be on stage. I love to sing and play music and write songs and do all that. But the show business side of it, I kind of shy away from, to be honest. Yeah, I could see it. You know, I mean, the thing is, with me, I was drawn into music. When I was, you got a picture of like a 14-year-old kid in his bedroom in, in a town in the northeast of England, which is so far away from the Delta in, in Mississippi and all of that thing. And I'm list there I am listening to, to Howlin' Wolf go, you know, uh, oh, I have had my fun <laughs> if I don't get well no more, you know, and I'm yeah. listening. Wow, this is and, and there's so much in that voice and in the story of of what this guy is saying to me that that that's what hit me, that's what struck me, and that's what I followed. That you know what I mean, like singing his heart out about his life, about his life, and yeah. all of the past. And it just registered with me. How yeah. old were you when you were listening to these guys? I was just fourteen. And how yeah. old were you in Free? Uh, we were, I was 18 when we started. Wow, we'll 18, see. 19. Montrose, we I was 24 my yeah. first time I made a record. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I, I got professional very early because uh, there was a guy, the, gu the guitarist in our band was uh, Joe Bradley, and his, his older brother took on the role of managing us. And he told us, he, I went to see him on his deathbed, bless him, and I said, what was it, what were the key things that were part of your management you know, philosophy, if you like, because he was my first manager. He said, he said, you get there early, do a good show, get the money, and get home safe. Those were his four things. <laughs> and like, Not he bad. always used to drum that into us, you know, Not bad. get there early, do a good show, get the money, <laughs> you know, and get home safe. And I, I don't know, that was, that sense of professionalism was instilled in me, like at 14, 15, that's when we were doing these shows, and that's when we were, really getting organized, you know. So by the time I was playing at the Isle of Wight with Free, and we had a big hit all right now, we were well, I, I, quite old timers, really. You know, we've been doing it for four it years. It blows my mind yeah. that, you, that you, you know, it's like I, I was sitting there listening to you, and I, w yeah. I was older than you. It's like, I'm going, wow. wow. So Bad Company, you guys got Peter Grant now. You probably made a better deal. Yes. And all that. So now you're starting to make it big time. Were you happy? Were you guys happy together? Were you guys one of those bands that hated well, each other from the beginning? Or? No, 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 no. It was, uh, it was great. It was at first, it was fantastic. It was like, um, it was like discovering each other and the music we could create together, and it was so easy. But we had was so tight together. We could yeah. feel what was going on by by hearing. It's a great and, record. And, I mean, one of the uh, great first it was, records. Yeah, it was. It had that feel, a very natural feel. Yeah. yeah. But your stuff, mm. to me, when mm. I watch you on stage, hear you sing, it just seems like it's so well thought and precise, it sounds like you respect the song as you're singing it to me, and it gives it a I, more heart and soul. Man. That's it's right. Really well, that's what I get from, from the blues and the soul guys, yeah. is that they, um, they want to reach out, and they want you, the listener, to dig this, to get this, to feel it the way they're feeling it. That's what their intention is. Their, their intention isn't to say, I'm great, look at me. Yeah. Their intention is to say, wow, feel this. And that's what I like about, you know, yeah, those singers. Yeah, you can tell the difference yeah. of the guys that are saying, hey, look at me, <laughs> when they're singing. Ow, oh, woo, hey, hey, yeah. <laughs> A little too much of that. I have this silly little thing where I do this or that, Paul. And it's very simple. Just, you know, you don't have to sit on the fence. You can, for one time, you can say, this is what I really believe in. So uh -huh. I only have just three little things here. The road or the studio? Ooh. I think you need both, actually. Sorry, I know that's a, that's a kind of on-the-fence compromise. <laughs> but here's the thing. Don't go Libra. The road <laughs> feeds the studio, yeah, feeds sure the road. Yeah, sure it does. But if you it? could only do one, it's like which hand would they cut off? Come on, that kind of uh, a, a The road, question. I think. The road. Yeah, yeah. 
Free or bad company? Ooh. You only had one. Free. I love bad company, but damn it, I don't know if I could live without <laughs> Well, there wouldn't be no bad company without That's free. true. Oh, you're not going to like this one. Jeff Beck or Jimmy Page? Well, for me, it's Jimmy Page. I, I, I mean, I love it. It has to be. I just saw him. Until this can't... next tour. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're going to tell me, Jeff Beck, I've never seen a better guitar. I want to work with him. I no. want to see you and Jeff Beck work. Well, I'm going to do everything I love them I both. I, yeah, I do them both. But, I mean, what's not to love? But uh, I, Jimmy is so such a great guy. You know, he came to the Albert Hall when we played there last, the, the last year, and it was just great to see him. He's just so good. Yeah, he's one of my favorites of all time. Yeah. I'm glad nobody asked me that question. <laughs> Paul, thank ah, you. Thanks. It's been an honor to get to know you. It's my been an honor, honor for actually. you to do this show with me yeah. and sing it with you the other night. We're yeah. going to show the clip of that. By God, wait a minute. We actually sang together. I sang with Paul. I came on stage. I couldn't sleep that whole damn night <laughs> afterwards. I'm rewinding my head. I wonder if I did all right. I should have done this. Oh, man, I shouldn't have done that and all that kind of stuff. But that's because I'm silly and I'm a, and you're uh, a hero. Well, so, thanks for having me anyway. on. Mike, you want to play bass when we, Sam, what? When we do it? You want to come up and play bass? I don't know. No, I, what do you, you know? Doing? I don't know what you're doing. Wait, wait. Here come the Chesters. One, two, three. It's all part of my, wait, fantasy. The music's so loud. Oh, you can not it. again, Mike. Oh. been so kind. And thank you all so much for being part of our rock and roll fantasy tonight.